Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. The Savachi syndrome, I'm telling you, I'm like, well, holy shit, that was crazy. Wait for it. Thick and slick. <laughs> What is up everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Moto Aftermath Show presented by TLR Coatings and Durango Guitar Works. Uh, we are here as you can see still kind of uh, shooting from the hip. We have a uh, have another show here. Uh, I thought we were going to meet up with Cole down at Daytona. He was there however I didn't see him all day. It's a big place. There's a lot of people. You never know what or where people are. Um, I was texting him trying to find him, but we didn't really uh, didn't really end up connecting Also, the weather was about as cold as it is in Michigan all day with a huge wind <sighs> So what ended up happening was we ended up freezing to death uh, check out the vlog that will be up soon for that and uh, So as soon as the race was actually over we me and Ashley got the heck out of there because we were frozen literally shivering during the entire main um, but anyway Let's uh, let's jump into some of the paperwork stuff here. We'll talk about our boy Kevin Morans, who we are sponsoring for the remainder of the 2020 season, and his day a little bit. And then we will uh, we'll talk some fantasy, some 250, and some 450. Uh, because even though it was somewhat of a lackluster race for the way this year has gone. Um, it was there were still some things that happened so anyway uh let's start off with the boring paperwork again this show sponsored by tlr coatings and durango guitar works custom powder coating custom guitars it's all there it's all you could want so make sure to check them out links in the description below make sure to follow us on all the major social media channels as i said we were in daytona i've been posting some stuff up from there uh make sure to follow because we are going to indy and detroit the next two rounds here so there will be content coming down the tubes here make sure to like subscribe and comment down below as you can see i'm doing a solo show here much like we did last week so I'm gonna need some feedback. I'm gonna need some people to talk to. Uh, I'm just gonna shoot my thoughts here and uh, tell me what you think. If I'm wrong, if I'm right, whatever. Um, also, if you wanna help support us because going to these races is not cheap, there are links in the description to Amazon. You can buy something. Shout out to whoever did go through and buy something because uh, we made some money the other day. I think you bought music instruments or something i'm not really sure i can't remember exactly so anyway uh shout out to them who bought stuff there are links to hoodies t-shirts all the good stuff down below and we will get those out to you um let's see there is also patreon link so if you want to support us that way make sure to click one of those go in there you can you can do a little or a lot it's up to you and uh then that helps us out quite a bit so make sure to check those out down below now let's talk about our sponsored rider and this is this may not be a big deal to some people it's kind of a big deal to me I haven't really uh, done a lot of sponsoring it's only what my third full year in business here as uh, as the show as the TLR coatings company um, so to be able to sponsor and help out a privateer uh, with more than just hey here's 20 bucks type deal is is a pretty cool thing to do so uh for those of you who don't know who haven't been following us on the social media we are sponsoring the number 77 of kevin moran's he's doing the 250 class for the east coast rounds um and has been doing pretty well here little little whoopsies in tampa uh that wasn't really his fault and i think he's just got a little bit of a florida curse to be really honest so uh this week got caught up in the uh whoops of death in the uh in the heat race um bent bent the bike all up he did get it fixed got out there for the lcq was in qualifying position um and told me he just got a little bit tight uh it happens you know so make sure if you are um at indy or any of the east coast rounds from here on out that you stop by say hi um go give him a follow on instagram too he uh great kid and uh yeah check him out he's he's putting it in the mains and doing it all on his own here at this point so 
Anyway, let's jump into fantasy talk here. If you don't like fantasy talk, maybe fast forward for the next 10 minutes here, maybe like five minutes, because I guess it's just myself. Um, so fantasy this week was, uh, as far as the pulp fantasy went for me, really rough. Really, really, really rough. Uh, I scored 187 points. And uh, I mean, I basically ran into problems with two of my two of my eight riders. So, 25% of my field really dicked me hard, which really sucked. And uh, the rest did pretty okay. Had I had those two guys actually do something better, would have been a much much better weekend for me. So anyway, let's jump into this. So on Pulp Fantasy, which we do have a league, by the way, if you want to play, join up. We do prizes for the top three people at the end of every season, so make sure to go search the Moto Aftermath Show League on there and uh, join up and uh, play some fantasy with us. So anyway, 250 I had, let's see here, oh whoops, wrong race. I know I was on the wrong race because Colt Nichols was my first pick and Colt Nichols is not riding yet. So anyway, uh, 250 riders, RJ Hampshire scored me 23 points. Not bad, not great, but for a uh, for a uh, all-star, I will take it. Uh, Nick Gaines, I saw Nick Gaines go off in a golf cart after his heat race. I knew we were not doing well with Nick Gaines that night. So he scored me zero points, he was out. Uh, Chase Marquier made it in, got me 38 points, and Dustin Winter made it in and scored me 32. So everyone else did solid, just we got foobarred with Nick Gaines going down in the whoops of death there. If you didn't see that crash, go check it out. It is absolutely gnarly, bike flipping everywhere. Um, get into 450, had the general, Ryan Sipes. Made it in through his heat race, which was actually probably one of the surprises of the night for me. Sorry, I don't have anywhere else to walk right now, so I gotta walk by this road. I know the background noise is loud. Anyway, um, Ryan Sipes made it in through his heat in the 450 class, which was super impressive, and then scored me a solid 34 points, so that's awesome. Uh, we had Justin Brayton, scored me a solid 30, another solid night by him. Uh, Jason Anderson got me the full 26, so that was great, and Blake Baggett is pretty much what dicked me over. He, uh, he scored four, Baggett pulled off. I'm not really sure. I haven't gotten to watch and or listen to everything yet, so I don't know what happened to Baggett. Injury, what was going on. I saw him ride off. Nothing appeared to be too terribly wrong. Uh, he, just, he just jumped out of the race, so I don't know. Don't really know what was going on with that. As far as the RM Fantasy went, that went awesome. Um, I picked the top five correct, did not get the wild card got uh, like a hundred and some odd points in that so that was great I'm I'm almost uh, I think I have one league I'm in fourth and the other two leagues I'm leading by quite a bit now so <sighs> oh, oh, oh geez anyway uh, end of the vacation so now I'm really tired anyway so uh, yeah so fantasy was kind of eh, it was up and down for me all day now uh, we've been through our fantasy there. There's not really a whole lot more to talk about with that. Let's move on to the races here. And let's start with the 250 class and let's just start right at the top with the winner. Garrett Marchbanks, dominant all day. Heat race, completely dominant. Um, had Jeremy Martin in tow in the heat race, but kept him right, kept him right in his spot right behind him and just went to work. Absolutely uh, led wire to wire. There was, I mean, it was unbelievable to see. And when I saw that, I went, wow, he is on one tonight. If he gets a start in the main, it's gonna be tough. One thing with that track, very, wasn't a barn burner as Weege puts it. It was a very one line track with all the switchbacks. Uh, so I knew there wasn't going to be, when I saw the map, I thought it might be okay. When I saw it in person, I went, oh, never mind. There's not gonna be a lot of passing here. So um, good on Garrett to get his first uh, Supercross win. Everybody feels like he's been in the game for a lot longer than he has. This is actually only a second year of Supercross. Um, but man, did he look solid all night. And then in the main, just, getting that whole shot and pretty much wire to wire there and just gone so and in the heat him and martin actually gapped sexton by like 16 seconds at one point i know sexton was uh he was caught up in one of the whoops of death wrecks there in the 250 classes but he uh 
he was not catching them very fast. And in the main, he kept Marchbanks kept Sexton pretty much about four-ish seconds behind him the whole time. You could tell Sexton was putting in some charges trying to get to Marchbanks, uh, but just couldn't, had nothing for him. So it's good to see Garrett win. Be interesting to see if this momentum keeps going for him uh, throughout the rest of the season, especially like going into next week in Indy. How will he do when we go back to a normal Supercross track? Comment below with what you think is gonna happen with that. I think he is, I'm not sure he's gonna win again this year, but I think he is going to continue in this fashion of top fives. Um, and I believe he's only gonna get better. He looked super solid all day. He looks super solid this season, so. As far as that goes, I think uh, I think more big things to come from this kid, and I could definitely see him on the box more this year, but another win is questionable for me. Now, let's go to second place, Chase Sexton. Um, he, once again, and I cannot stress this enough, looked just solid. New man, definitely a podium slash winner guy every single week. Um, you could tell in practice uh, he was kind of struggling a little bit to find that little extra to get up top uh, as far as qualifying went. He definitely um, wanted that spot. He wants to, you can almost see it in him, go, he, like he wants what he talks about. He wants to go out and dominate. And he has the skills to do it at this point. Um, another super solid night. Did put in some charges. You could tell, like I said, where he was pushing throughout the main to try to gain some ground on March Banks. I was kind of timing it. We were sitting right by the tunnel jump as he would go by and never really put much time in to get closer. There was at one point he got a little closer, but that, that was about it. He never really closed the gap down. He never really made a push or had anywhere where he was that much faster than Garrett on that track. Um, but again, solid ride, second and extended his points lead over Shane. Shane, I believe, was fifth or sixth. Sorry, again, I don't have any notes here, and I'm not gonna have my phone out and pulling that all up here as we go. Um, but Shane did have two minor tip overs in the main. Uh, basically, the heat race, he looked great, and I thought, oh boy, here we go. We're gonna have a battle royale with him and Sexton, and you're gonna have March Banks up there. Um, but again, couldn't really get it together. He went down once at the beginning of the sand section, um, just a minor tip over, went down once at the end of the sand section, again, just a minor tip over. Uh, so that's just, just was a rough night for him. And uh, again, losing ground in the championship uh, fight to Sexton. And in a way it just makes me look better because it's looking more promising that Sexton's gonna repeat at this point. But again, there's still a lot of racing left to do. We still have a couple East West showdowns, so nothing is completely settled yet, but we'll see where we at when the dust settles. It definitely is looking promising though for me to look good this year at the end of the year because I did say Sexton would repeat. That was on my radar. Um, now we can continue back and talk about Shane. Like I said, a couple of tip overs, looked great in his heat race, looked great in qualifying. And again, just looks solid, but the sand just got him. And not anything I really blame Shane for. It's just the way it works out sometimes. Some nights it's your night and some nights it's not. So, um, but I will say it's definitely, he's put himself in a spot here as far as making it tricky to get that title that he I feel he needs to get a 450 ride going forward to next year. Comment down below with what you think as far as do you think he's going to get a 450 ride? Where do you think he will land? And how likely is it he gets the ride if he doesn't uh, doesn't actually seal the deal on this title? So, um, some other notables for the night. Jeremy Martin, again, looks solid, but nothing crazy good. Um, for what I thought he was going to come back and just be a force to be reckoned with here on this 250 East, he has had some podium finishes but really nothing dominant looking yet um he's right there he's right in the mix but he is uh he's not anything that is blowing me out of the water he just looks like the standard jeremy martin we've seen of old uh no blazing fast speed and i know he's been off the bike for two years and that frankly for being off the bike for almost two years, this is where I kind of expected him to be, was somewhere like this, solid in there. He's a veteran, he knows what he's doing, but 
he doesn't have that blazing speed in Supercross. Now, come outdoors, completely different story, um, but we'll get into that another day. I don't want to make this show too long here. Uh, let's see, other notables for the night. Joe Shimoda looked good all night. I don't know where he finished, but he looked good all night. Uh, Jordan Smith. Well, Jordan Smith is Jordan Smithing again. Um, he, I don't remember his heat race exactly. Like I said, I was there at the race and I've only watched some of the broadcast. I think I made it through the th two 250 heats before we got through traffic there. But anyway, uh, Jordan Smith crashed out in the main, saw him limping off the track. Um, so no title this year for Jordan Smith. And if he doesn't have a multi-year deal, he is going to have, I feel, a rougher time getting a ride next year here because there just hasn't been a lot there from what I've seen. It's been very, very, very Jordan Smithy, as we'll call it, which is lots of crashes, not but no flashes of speed this year, just lots of crashes. RJ Hampshire, um, another solid night. He looked good. Uh, I don't think he had any issues in the May. I don't remember. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't remember. He looked okay throughout the day, uh, but not great in my opinion. And again, another guy that, uh, much like Jordan Smith, with his with his move, you thought you were going to see this new guy who had all the answers and was fast, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we're seeing that's not so much the case. So we'll have to see how it goes. Um, but for right now. I don't see either of these guys winning a title. I don't see either of them. Maybe RJ could win a race, maybe, but that's going to be iffy at best. So I'm trying to think if there was anything else in the 250 class that was really wild or anything. Um, we had Swole and Brown, the two rookies, both have to go through the LCQ. Uh, that was mostly the crash and the whoops in both heat races caused. That wasn't really anything caused by themselves. Um, I think that was pretty much it. The Club MX guy's still killing it. I believe Lopes got like eighth in the main, uh, which is really good for them to see them in the top 10 every single week. So that's cool. And uh, the Chaparral Honda team, they had at least, I think, two bikes in the main. So uh, interesting. And I think that's all I've got for 250s, really. Like I said, the racing wasn't super duper interesting. I was trying to find races as I was standing there watching. Um, but with the track being so one line, it was, eh. So moving on to 450s, though, we can talk. Um, <laughs> there is some stuff to talk about in the 450s. <sighs> so when the 450 race started, because the track was so one line, Kenny uh, comes out second gets the lead going down the first straightaway there very quickly from Anderson and starts to take off and I pretty much thought at that point with Eli being buried okay here we go Eli hadn't looked overly impressive all day we'll just say that he he was not very impressive so um, I didn't really have much faith that he was actually going to get up and catch uh, Ken and in fact if you listen to the press conference he didn't have faith in himself that he was going to get up and catch Ken. Uh, Ken got out to about a seven second lead and Tomac and Webb started working their way through. We all were waiting for the Tomac and Barsha battle royale round whatever it is. Uh, however we didn't get that. Barsha had a small mistake. Tomac got by relatively easily and boom off he went. He then made quick work of Webb and at that point they were still about seven seconds behind. Sorry if there's wind noise. It's it's windy out here for some reason today. Um, anyway, after that, uh, they he made quick work of Webb and then took off after Ken. Uh, my girlfriend actually wanted to know how much time was between the two of them. I got my cell phone out to do the stopwatch between them when they came around the next lap. And boom, I hit the start as Ken went over the tunnel, looked for Eli, and all of a sudden, boom, Eli was going over the tunnel jump too. And I went, oh crap, it's less than two seconds. When it got to less than two seconds, I went, ah, oh, shit. Um, and basically at that point knew that Ken was in trouble. Ken did a good job of holding him off for about a lap and a half, two laps. Uh, however, a mistake in that off-camber turn before they went down towards the start area 
uh, just jumped or went to the inside and they had the dirt built way up on the inside. Ken says he doesn't really know what happened. I feel like he put his leg out just a smidge too early, caught it on the inside dirt berm, pulled him off the bike. Um, who knows, I wasn't riding. I only had the angle I could see. That is what I felt like I saw happen, but who knows. Uh, but anyway, so Ken, mistake there. Eli gets by him and Eli just kind of sets sail, puts a couple seconds on Ken and that was pretty much how they finished. They rode out the last few laps there like that. Uh, so now going into Indy, Eli has a three point lead I think is all. Uh, it definitely makes things very, very exciting for us here. You have two dudes who are pretty much separating themselves from the pack, but they're not separating from each other. They're pretty much trading off wins and or off weeks, which result in a, say, fourth through seventh finish. Um, but other than that, they are not really putting any distance between each other. It lines up great for these last seven races here. Having both of them, like I said, within a few points of each other, they both can win races. Um, this is going to go down to the wire, I have a feeling, unless one of them really makes a big mistake. But with both of them, Eli definitely looks a little different this year as far as the mistakes he's making. Uh, they're not that big, and he does recover nicely from them. And Ken is just solidly putting together week after week after week after week. So we will see how it continues to roll here. Um, other than that, Webb, another solid finish on the box in third. Uh, but he is now... 29 points back and he's not mathematically out of it yet he's not completely out of it but man he would have to start stringing together some wins and to be completely honest i i don't think he has it in him i know webb is a champion and webb has put together back-to-back -to -back championships and an outdoor title all in the same era or same like year sequence but I'm struggling to see it. Barsha also not mathematically out of it right there, but again, just struggling to see Barsha put together multiple weeks in a row where he is actually going to uh, be able to make up some ground here. I think the cream has definitely rose to the top, and we're finally getting the battle that we've all been wanting and thinking we were going to have for years. We're getting that Tomac Roxon battle royale down to the wire for the title. And uh, it's gonna be great. I mean, the nice thing is they're respectable. They race each other clean, but they race each other hard. They're not afraid to get put it in on each other, um, but not in a sense of I'm gonna come in and saw off your wheel or I'm gonna come in and break your break your tib fib or anything like that. They're putting it in there just so it's a, I'm here, move, I'm going to the front thing. So, <sighs> Other notables of the night, Anderson again rode well, right there in the top five. Barsha again rode well, right there in the top five. I wanna say the surprise of the night would have to be Plessinger. He um, he definitely looked really, really good uh, as the night went on. Um, he looked good in practice actually all day. I was watching him and noticed he looked fast, he looked racy. In his heat race, he grabbed a great start, looked fast, looked racy. And in the main event, he was right there in the top five battling with Barsha. Barsha did ultimately get him, but he was right there. He was not, uh, not backing down, not backing out. So, um, I'm trying to think anything else I really saw. There wasn't a lot. There wasn't a lot on the track that anyone did differently than anyone else. Um, and there wasn't really a lot going on. Again, it was kind of like it shook out where it shook out after the start. And that was pretty much it other than Tomac going to the front. So not a lot more to talk about. I've dwelled on for 23 minutes here. I can say that the next few weeks are going to be great. Again, I am going to Indy and Detroit. Make sure if you see me, say hi tell me you watch the show etc etc I'll sit there and bench race with you if you'd like to uh, make sure to check out our sponsors again all the links in the description down below make sure to look out for vlogs for the next few races make sure to look out for some raw riding clips from the next few races and make sure to go check out our sponsor rider Kevin Moran's if you're at the next any of the East Coast rounds so this has been another episode of the Moto Aftermath Show presented by Durango Guitar Works and TLR Coatings, and we will see everybody next week.